Welcome everyone. This is a brief overview of the activities happening within the demonstrator project Drone Arena within the Digital Futures program. I'm Luca Motola, I'm the uh, principal project investigator from RISE. Uh, Irene Lampinen is the co-PI from Stockholm University. We like to say that the Digital Future Drone Arena is both a concrete and a conceptual platform that enables interdisciplinary research at the intersection of many different disciplines, including mobile robotics, autonomous systems, machine learning, and human-computer interaction. However, what that practically means is that from this high-level objective, we have three very concrete goals to be achieved. First is the design and implementation of a novel drone testbed that, uh, as I will explain later, is expressly conceived to enable application level experimentation. Using the testbed, we organize two drone competitions that are instrumental to achieve the third goal in the project, which is investigating the relationships unfolding between humans and drones. The design of the testbed is uh, um, driven by the need of allowing humans to express and encode um, interactions with technologies, especially with mobile robotics. The testbed is right now based on state-of-the-art aerial drone technology, especially the Crazy Free 2.1 nano drone, and uses a localization system based on infrared that makes it easy to relocate the testbed at different places depending on the opportunity. The programming interface is designed to facilitate the use of the testbed from people who are not necessarily drone experts. Especially, we are providing all the hooks and the knobs necessary for um, enabling the specification and encoding of interactions between the aerial drones and their surroundings, including both people and um, objects. Using the testbed, we have organized the inaugural drone challenge back in June. Uh, the challenge took place at the reactor hall at KTH campus in um, uh, Stockholm downtown. We recruited six teams of two to four people who have gone through three uh, very intense days of um, work. On the first day, we opened the event with a keynote speech by Joseph Ladelfa, who's a researcher at KTH, um, focusing especially on uh, understanding the interactions between uh, aerial drones and humans. We have taught the um, participating teams the basics of drone programming. In a couple of hours, we were able to um, uh, give them a, a head start and they were able to start flying with their own drones. And most of them didn't have any previous experience with this technology. And then for the rest of the first day and for the whole second day, we moved for, uh, to the reactor hall and the teams had the opportunity to experiment with the, um, uh, the drones we have given them in two different uh, testbed areas trying to solve a challenge that we had given them on the first day. On the third day, we ran the actual challenge and the event wrapped up with a, a prize giving ceremony. The challenge itself was about programming a drone to be steered by a human. So we're not talking about autonomous flight here, but rather about um, movement in space of the drone that are determined by the relations between and interactions between the drone itself and the human through an obstacle course in a fixed time by collecting, meaning by flying over as many markers as possible while avoiding the obstacles. Uh, on the picture on the left hand side, you see an example uh, um, testbed area that we had uh, set up in the reactor hall during the uh, trials of the challenge. The letters on the ground um, indicate the markers. The job of the drone steered by the human was to fly over as many of these markers as possible while avoiding the obstacles and staying within a fixed time. This is somehow reminiscent of an 80 video games called Pac-Man, but we have basically translated the logic of the game into the physical world using drones steered by humans 
as the Pac-Man going through um, through the space and, and collecting the, the points in, in the video game. The challenge was an instrument for us to do research to, uh, with the objective of gaining a better understanding on the um, unfolding relationship between humans and drones. This served a dual purpose. On one hand, we wanted to inform the future competitions happening in the drone arena. Keep in mind that um, all we are doing in, in terms of both hardware and software development will be released as open source at the end of the project. And you may even take it and um, um, redeploy the testbed itself in your own lab or uh, at a company. Uh, and we also wanted to um, develop insights regarding how do we pilot drones with our own new movements. To that end, our research team has observed the event and video recorded part of it while interviewing the competitors to uh, essentially get a feeling of you know, how um, uh, they were uh, addressing the challenge by either programming the drone or training themselves. And I will get back to this point um, in a minute so that they could solve the challenge in the most efficient way possible. During the challenge itself, we have seen uh, many different uh, solutions. The teams have uh, come up with very diverse ways of um, approaching the, the problem. Um, as you can see, for example, the video on the left shows one of the teams um, that has used essentially external objects to extend the capabilities of the human body. Uh, whereas the video on the right shows another team uh, that took a totally different approach. They didn't really rely on the capability of the human pilot, but rather focused their efforts, invested most of their efforts on advancing and making more efficient the behavior of the drone while programming it in the most effective possible way. And what I mentioned earlier is an example of the insights that we have um, uh, collected and gathered in the meantime. Um, one thing that is really at the center of our current research based on the huge amount of material we have collected in the first challenge is to uh, essentially study how the different teams have um, explored the trade-off between training the drones, so investing their efforts into making the drone behavior more efficient versus training the person, training the human pilot, which means essentially learning how the drone reacts to the body movements and trying to compensate the inability, the lack of intelligence of the drone with the, uh, our own ability to, to be smarter in, in um, steering the drone around the, the course. We have seen, as shown before, teams uh, that have extended their own body capabilities with external aids. Um, but we also noted that um, teams had to come to terms with the fact that crashes and errors were mm, normal, were not the exception. Um, this um, appeared quite stressful at the beginning, but the teams have quickly realized that that, that was what they had to deal with, and they, were, uh, they had to be prepared essentially to mm, both program the drone or adapt their own behavior to counteract these um, uh, unexpected uh, movements or expected behaviors of, uh, of the drones. We've also observed that uh, we had teams, for example, we had one team formed by um, uh, aerospace engineers who had a much deeper understanding because of their background and knowledge, not in drone technology, but in other disciplines of how the drone uh, was reacting in certain ways and what were the root causes of that. Based on that knowledge, they were able to have to come up with more efficient solutions for those peculiar situations. But overall, uh, that was not enough to uh, win the challenge. Indeed, the winning team uh, is, um, was formed by people who didn't have any previous knowledge about drone technology at all. And overall, um, the whole challenge was yet another example of uh, how people perhaps may even have a hard time understanding where to invest their efforts between being practical or being sophisticated. Of course, being sophisticated requires time that most of the teams didn't really have because the challenge was uh, stretching across uh, 
essentially two days and a half. So they had to be a little bit practical, but um, some teams kind of took the wrong path and trying to achieve so sophisticated behaviors that they couldn't really um, um, completely specify in the time they had for the challenge. The question is now, what is next? We are uh, in the process of translating the insights we have gained in the first challenge uh, into new piloting principles. We are imagining new piloting interfaces that are um, a function of how uh, one's body moves in space rather than breaking away from the traditional mainstream piloting interfaces of aerial drones. And meanwhile, we are, we are writing a research article that will report on these insights um, and will hopefully combine both the expertise of the technical people and those of the um, uh, people who are uh, rather expert in social sciences, because this was really an experiment across the two uh, disciplines. We are also preparing for the second room challenge, where we are going to take inspiration from the world of fashion, currently scheduled for um, early 2023 in Stockholm, where the idea is to push the envelope even more, see what happens when drones enter a stage that they normally do not belong to, which is the one of, of fa fashion shows. This was really a team effort, um, and besides me and Ari, um, there were a number of people involved, especially in the organization and, and, and running of the first challenge. Here in the slides, you see uh, actually only some of them, and we, are, um, we want to thank everybody for um, making these events such a great success. So I thank everybody for listening, and um, uh, you can find more information at our website, uh, dronearena.info, or feel free to drop me an email if you want to know more.